It was not nice going to the bank and saying, I'm going to pay more. It was not nice taking a large sum of money that I could have used to do renovations in this house, but then taking it and putting it to the bank. It was not nice taking my bonus and actually put giving it to the bank. It was not nice. But was it worth it? Yes, it was worth it. It was something that I needed. It's something that my finances needed so much because I needed to be free. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I hope that you are doing well. I'm doing okay. And if you are new here, my name is Jennifer. I like to do business content. I like to do financial content. I just like to do whatever that feels good to me at that time and then I just roll with it. But these days I've been doing some off financial talks because I love talking about money. I'm not by any means saying that I'm an expert when it comes to finances or I know better than anyone else because many people are very clued up with their finances and some people are still tr struggling and trying to find their way but I'm not that person who's going to come here and give you financial advice because I am not a financial advisor. What I'm doing basically is just sharing my story, sharing my journey and where I've come from and where I am and also where I'd like to see myself with hopes that it will inspire you as you are watching my video to also, you know, start making changes in your life financially. So today we're going to be talking about one of the sensitive topics that I think I can never talk about because I feel like sometimes when you put certain things on YouTube, it may come off as flexing and I don't want that to be the case with me or my story that I'm going to share with you today. Let's get into the story. So I managed to pay back 100, over 100,000 of a loan, yes, loan back to the bank within three years, like less than three years. And not because I'm getting paid a lot of money, not because I was so smart with my money, but it came a point in my life where I felt like I am not, I'm not working for myself. The only thing I'm literally working for right now is the banks. And those are the people that actually get the most out of me. But what am I getting out of myself? I wake up every day, I go to work, I put in the best foot forward, I get paid end of the month, but most of that money is taken by the banks. And so, I think that shift of mind kind of propelled me to start making better actions regarding getting rid of the debt. So how did I come to owe that much money in terms of personal loan? I think the only thing that will kind of give you an idea is for me to go back to my childhood so that you can kind of understand where I'm coming from or how did I find myself in that position. My father, when, okay, my father passed on when I was very young, I was doing I was doing second year. I don't know what you call that, grade two. I was doing grade two at that time and my, pada, my father passed on. But my father did something which most, most fathers don't get to do, especially in that position. My father never worked for someone in his life. He always hustled, he always found, found a way to make money. And so we had this family business and my mother was managing the finances in that family business. Not even like managing, she was just making sure that the invoices were paid and all that stuff. So that was the business that we had. My father, that business was basically a mechanical business and my father was good at it. And so what he did, he, he managed to put together enough money to actually build us a house because the whole time he was just renting with my mother. Even when we were there, he they were still renting. So he decided to build a house and he built this big five room house. It was a three bedroom, it was a three bedroom kitchen and a sitting room. There was, there was no bathroom back then. Like it was, when I'm talking back then, like I'm born in 1992. So back then having a bathroom inside a house in a township was just not nothing normal, you know? So he built that house and he built so beautifully so beautifully that that everyone who was passing by felt like we were so well off and i'm not gonna lie when my father was alive we were very well off C compared to most of the people in my township because in your township in a, in a township when you have a five room house that is properly built and that has a brick fence during that time and you also have someone who was working for you in terms of like cleaning and washing and on taking care of the kids full time 
you are considered well off. We were considered well off. And I think that we were well off because there's nothing that we needed that we couldn't get at the time. And then, so my father built that house. However, he didn't finish building the house. Yes, the structure was there, but there was no ceiling. As I said, no bathroom. It's just a house, you know. And when he passed on, he, before he passed on, he left an order with my mom to say, it will be our job to finish off the house, to complete it and just make it how it's supposed to look like. And then my, our dad passed on. When he passed on, that when that's when we actually struggled the most because now we didn't have the breadwinner, we didn't have the hustler in the family, the person who always knew how to make money and get money, you know, in a legitimate way. So now he wasn't around. And so we had to deal with a lot of poverty. We had to, we grew up struggling. Sometimes we didn't even know what we were going to eat that night. I would go to school hungry and come back hungry and still not know what I'm going to eat, you know. To a point whereby having finding a job for me made sense and that's what I did. And that kind of relieved a lot of pressure from my mom because now I was able to, you know, buy school clothes for us. I was able to no longer walk with shoes that have holes underneath them. I was able to buy myself sanitary pads. My mother started working and all the stuff. I think seeing all the things that she wanted to do and provide for us, she turned to the banks the most because now she has a pay slip and she gets this money. It became easier for her to go to the bank and say, can you borrow me this money? Because I'll, yeah, can you borrow me this money? And the bank would give her that money. And so she found herself in the cycle where every time she wanted to do something, she would go to the bank, borrow money, do that thing, then pay off that money. So that is what I also grew up you know, witnessing and thinking this is normal, you know. Now, fast forward to me as an adult when I was now, f I finished doing my internship, I got a permanent job, thank God for that. I had always had a vision to do something at home because here's the thing, even though it was a three bedroom house, but one of the bedrooms was for the boys, the other bedroom was for us and it's three girls and the other bedroom was for my mother. And the, our bedroom was the smallest in the house and it was just not nice to be in cramped up in that room and so i got out and i started sleeping on the floor in the living room for a longest time even when i was in varsity i was sleeping on the floor when I, I was doing my internship whenever i'm going back home i would sleep on the floor and then when i got my job now i had a child I started thinking i'm not gonna be doing this i can't be doing this i'm too old to be sleeping on the floor when I got my job within like maybe six months in of me having that job, I went to the bank and borrowed a large sum of money with a plan that I was, I, I'm going to renovate at home. And that is exactly what I did with the money. We started building, we started extending the house. We added two bedrooms. Now at least I have a bedroom, you know, we added a bedroom, we added, we added two bedrooms. We were able to put towels. We were able to put a full functioning bathroom, you know, put ceiling, like kind of make the house very decent and the way that our father envisioned it, you know, and what he, well, what I thought he meant when he said we need to, we would, you know, it's our responsibility to finish the house. So that is what I did. And then fast forward, I started paying for the loan and the loan had told, they had told me that I'm going to pay for it for over three years. So I started paying for the loan after a year, there was a time when my mother needed to pay for her school fees because she got her teaching job without a teaching qualification. But then she started actually studying and trying to get a qualification. But now she was owing this sum of money that she had not paid to a point where it had earned interest and it became a lot of money, you know, from something that is less than 10 grand to it to be more, way more than 10 grand. It was something, yeah, it was very big. So she needed to pay for her school fees so that she can get her results and submit them to the department just to show that okay this is her progress and all the stuff so what i decided to do was because i wanted to bail my mother out i didn't want my mother to suffer this one thing that actually put me in all the situations it was always about i want to provide something better for my family and i don't want to suffer i don't want my mother to suffer while i'm still alive when i can do something so i decided to go to the bank again yet again i'm still owing the bank and i i've only paid for like a year for that loan and remember when you take a personal loan most most of the first year basically goes towards interest so the money wasn't really going down but i was like you know what i really don't care i went to the bank i borrowed the money i came the i came back 
and then they gave me okay well they gave me the money and then i sent it to my actually i didn't send it to my mother i contacted directly the school they told me how to pay i made the payment after that i requested the results they sent me the results i was able to send those results to my mother so that she can be able to secure her job so that's how i actually found myself owing a lot a lot of money so yeah i hope that kind of gives you an idea of how i ended up owing that much money and you know what i don't feel bad about that because i know what i use that money for it was always for something that i had planned i didn't take the money and go galavant but i took the money and did something very valuable with it however as i continued on i realized that i'm only working for the banks i'm not working for myself and it started pissing me off as i was paying for the loan in those in that in that year while i was still in that position i then within within two years i then got a, a better job that pays me better i got that job and before i even went in that job i was already thinking about buying a car and thank goodness that i actually didn't because what i did after that i went to the bank and that and that time i'm still banking with capitec my loan were from capitec all my debts were from capitec so i went to capitec and i sat down with them i said i want to pay this loan quicker i'm tired of this loan i want to pay it quicker and i can afford to pay this much and they were able to they crunched in the numbers they looked at my record and all the stuff thank goodness that i paid every month i never skipped a month and i was just a good i was just i was a good debtor yeah debtor yeah i was a good debtor so they crunched in the numbers and they told me that okay if you are going to pay this much you can pay it for about 22 months so we'll put it down we'll narrow it down now to 22 months i was like oh perfect less than two years what this is what capitec does i think with all banks when you come back and you say and you say you want to you want to decrease the uh, the number of months or you want to increase the number of months whatever changes that you want to make on your loan what they do is they issue you a new loan so when i went back to them and said i want to pay this much money they had to issue me a new loan and that new loan and that new loan it means that they also have to give you extra that you are not owing before but now you're going to be owing that extra so because i had learned so much from capitec and going back to them and wanting more money to a point whereby i learned their tactics i learned that tech capitec is a bank that flourishes from people it's a bank that flourishes from debt so when pe when more people owe them that's how they flourish because there's a time where after you have paid for like over six to 12 months they will call you and say hi how are you we would like to offer you a better interest come to our office let us discuss it further that is how they kind of flow you in to come back to them now when they do that what they do they have this they have this they have this way of kind of convincing you to actually take more loan because what they do is they will say okay we see that we can offer you a lower interest rate on your debt if we low give you a lower interest rate on your debt that means that you can also get more money that is how they catch you that is how they keep you in their chains that is how they keep you within their system where you are working for them so because i had learned so much about the systems of capitec and how they work and mind you it helped that system of them calling me and telling me that i can get a lower interest rate it helped because what they do is when you first get a, a loan at capitec they'll give you a high percentage rate and my percentage rate was about over 20 percent of interest rate that i was paying when i started so after a year they called me and said we'll give you a lower interest rate so they took down my interest rate to about 17 percent uh, so that is a big difference that's when i started when i was paying i started seeing the debt going down going down going down so when i went back to them the third time around i was like you know what i know these people i've dealt with them now I am going to be asking for lower interest rate. I'm going to be asking for less years and I'm not going to be taking any money from them. When I got there, they crunched the numbers, yes. And then they told me that they can't give me a lower interest rate and all this without me taking some money. So I was like, you know what? Give me 4,000. They gave me that 4,000. Don't even know what I did with that 4,000, but that 4,000 had to be added on my loan, you know? So, they gave me an interest that was now normal, which is like 12.5, which is acceptable actually in the 
personal loan sphere so they gave me they said okay you're going to pay that much money and it's going to be on 12.5 percent and you're going to pay for it for 22 months which i was so happy about when i was continuing to pay for that loan now with the lower interest rates shorter term and more money that i was paying i started seeing it going down and that motivated me so when i got there was the time where i got this large sum of money from work and it was because i had bought a house and there's this money that they save for you so i claimed it and i got a lot of money from it and i decided that you know what i'm not gonna be enjoying this money most of it i took it and i paid towards the loan like a big sum of it because now i was seeing that oh my god okay at that time it was this year the loan i was going to be fit i was going to be finishing it in october but i just couldn't handle the money that i was paying for anymore because i looked at how much they take every time when i pay and so i realized that okay so all of this money is just i'm just giving it away to capitec it's just it's just me saying hmm me thank you take you know and it started frustrating me and so i wanted to get out of it quicker so any chunk of money that i was getting in terms of bonus and all this payback that i was getting i was channeling it to the loan so i did that for the first time sometime beginning of the year i took most of that money i paid the loan and it went down it literally went down to less than 10 grand guys i had paid for that loan to a point whereby it was less than it was less than 20 it was less than 25 grand you can imagine where i was coming well considering the money that i was owing i had actually paid a lot and so when i got that money i paid most of it in and it took my debt down it took it down to a very low amount and then when i got my ba my bonus the following month i did the same thing i did not enjoy that bonus at all i took a chunk of it and i paid for the loan again i paid into the loan and when i did that i was then left with one month which i then paid for the following month and then i was done i was done with the loan and i'm not gonna sit here and say it was nice it was not nice going to the bank and saying i'm going to pay more it was not nice taking a large sum of money that i could have used to do renovations in this house but then taking it and putting it to the bank it was not nice taking my bonus and actually put giving it to the bank it was not nice but was it worth it yes it was worth it it was something that i needed it's something that my finances needed so much because i needed to be free i needed to kind of breathe a little bit you know i needed to i needed some room to breathe you know and so that is what i did that is how i ended up paying off that loan and here are the take points that i just want you to remember when you take out the loan personal loan make sure that you stick to your plan do what you intended it for it do what you intended to do with it don't go and gallivant with the loan don't take personal loan and then go out go to trips and what what that will never make sense do something that is worthwhile something that you know that this is something that i'm gonna look back and not regret you know and then secondly if it's possible after you have paid for over 12 months in your bank if it's possible with your bank if they do provide that service go back to them sit down with them and negotiate a lower interest rate because if your interest rate is higher you're gonna keep paying more and more but you're not gonna see where you're going what helped me is that i kept going back to the bank and asking for a lower interest rate so they had to change my loan three times and in those three times my interest rate kept going down and the last time it was 12.5 and that is when i was able to push that loan i was able to push it and i was so excited with how it was going down and thirdly tell yourself that if you really want to get out of debt or you want to actually pay a certain loan find a way to pay that off it means if it means that you pay more money into it do that rather deprive yourself of certain things so that for this time you can be able to get yourself out of that and then you know that after you are out of that you can actually start enjoying your money you can freely do the things that you've always wanted to do with your money because now there is no bank following you around asking you for their money i'm not saying that i no longer have debt i still have debt but now at least i'm not living for the banks like most of my most of my income goes towards me servicing my expenses, saving a lot 
and also paying for some of the debts that I have, including my home loan, you know, but I'm not leaving for the banks. I don't feel like every time when I get paid, most of my money goes towards the bank. So I want to leave you with that, that where if you have a loan, kind of rethink your way around it, start using these financial institutions for your benefits, because for the longest time they've been using you. Now it's time for you to be very strategic and actually use them for your own benefit and don't fall into their traps of always giving you more money and making you their slaves because that is what we are when we keep paying all this money we can become their slaves because we don't see the end of what we are doing we keep paying 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 it's like we are peddling but we're going nowhere you know so think about that rethink that and find a way to get yourself out and also you don't have to have a lot of money sometimes it just calls for discipline as i said depriving yourself from instant gratification so that you can be able to channel your money in the right way so with that being said i'm not flexing here but i just wanted to share my story and share my journey and say you know what it is possible for you too if you are struggling right now and you find yourself owing banks a lot of money find a way around that find a way around that there's always a way around that with that being said thank you so much for watching this video if you are watching still now please make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe if you are not and i would like to see you on the next one please take care and stay safe bye